And um, so, I don't know, anybody want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I don't uh, like following, you want following me to, everybody else because they're all so good. You want me to pull up your lesson then and share from yes, my please. screen? Yes. Oh, and That's I didn't awesome. give anybody rights to um, uh, as co-host. Um, so let me just uh, start the share. And uh, so this is the lesson as a PDF, and it's dealing with problems the Kinevin way. Right. How do you say it, Kinevin? Kinevin. Right. Kinevin. Kinevin. Right. I had never I, heard that word before. I had not either, and I pronounced it Cinefin for a long time. Until well, me too. <laughs> I um I attended an an online class that was that was taught by David Snowden, and he. You know, it's talking about the Kinevin and that it's a Welsh <laughs> term. And it's, I knew it was Welsh, but uh, it's, um, I think I may have said this before, but somebody taught me once never makes fun of somebody who mispronounces a word because it means that they probably read it, learned it through reading. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ready to start? Yep. Go ahead. Oh, so I really, you know, I was caught between uh, doing the Kinevin way and the uh, Uda model because they're, they're both so awesome and i want to teach them to my classes mm -hmm. um but i figured i better teach them this first before i get into the uda because it kind of follows so um that's why i started with this and i tried to keep my lesson plan to like within an, a classroom period an hour um i don't think that can happen but that was my goal mm -hmm. um so anyway um when i have a note to the instructor it's usually with this uh, yellowish background here this textured background um all the other pages are um pretty much, uh, you know, you could copy them and hand them out to a class. Um, otherwise, they're specifically to the instructor. And on the first page, um, if you just go back there for a minute, I oh. wanted to point out the purpose on um, the lesson plan is designed to open up the student's awareness to the possibilities of identifying problems as particular types. Um, so they can learn to approach problems as opportunities to learn and grow and not as ominous insurmountable obstacles, uh, which is the way they see them. It's hoped that they'll drive an attitude of taking on challenges knowing they can be identified and therefore approached according to identity. This is the important part. In the process of learning, I want them to learn critical thinking skills um, and to develop a, a positive frame of mind, especially the kids that I deal with in juvenile detention. It's, uh, they're fighting real negative situations. And more problems will be solved more effectively, efficiently, and with a uh, no failure point of view. Um, because they try something once and give up. Because that's mm -hmm. in their lifestyle. In right. Life. So that's my goal. And then on the next page, um, dealing with problems, the, oh boy, Kinefin way. <laughs> um, uh, I like this quote. It was from uh, Simon Ash. It says, have you ever had a problem that in trying to solve it, you've made it worse? Well, yeah, I <laughs> have. I think most of us have. And then if you skip down to the second paragraph, uh, when trying to solve problems, we make things worse when we don't properly understand the problem in the first place. Therefore, one critical step in decision making is classifying the type of problem that you're trying to solve. Um, this is important as if you fail to categorize the nature of your challenge, you could end up applying the wrong solution or approach. And this might not only fail to solve the issue, but it could make it worse. Mm. You know, and that's that's so true. On the next page, you know, here we all are. I have a problem. I'm confused. You know, how do I solve it? So problem, confusion, what to do which creates more confusion, which is another problem, which is now what do I do? And um, I listed there um, the uh, five, uh, five, however many it is, five, I think, of uh, classical problem solving. I listed my choices. I considered and compared the consequences of each. I've made my decisions. I've acted on them. Oops, they didn't work. You know, and this is what I see in my kids. So I'm back to where I started now. What do I do? Well, you know, their first choice is always, should I give up? Yep. I'm giving up. I don't, I'm not doing it anymore. Or um, I could just blame somebody. Yeah. Right. Just, oh, yeah. I did, nothing is anybody's fault. It's, a, it's <laughs> somebody else's fault. Or, you know, is there another way that I can handle this problem? And that's what I'd really, I, I, that is such a big part of what we do here um, because their life is a problem. You know, what they're facing is a problem. Everything is there, nothing but a problem. And they just give up because they, they don't see any hope or any way of getting out of it. 
So to the next page, you can see that there's problems, 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 problems. And, you know, it's what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. <laughs> and then, you know, there are solutions out there. And but then we have to make the decisions, which creates another problem. So here is a review of the classic decision making. Uh, determine the alternatives, consider the consequences, compare the consequences, make the decision, and then carry it out and hope it works. Um, so, you know, this can be a very time consuming, laborious process. Um, there's always that, I hope it works. And if not, well, I either can start all over again, which I probably don't want to do, or give up. But yes, in answer to the previous question, there is another way. So the next page. It's really cool the way you're walking people through like like the wrong path so they can see the need to right, learn, learn exactly. a different path. And I have uh, two different exercises, but I'm not going to go through the, uh, you know, if anybody wants to read them, they can. Um, but the purpose of the first exercise is to present the class with a real life dilemma or a problem, of, of course, appropriate to the age, understanding and problem solving capabilities of the group that requires a solution. And then they're going to come up with individual uh, solutions and then get together with a pair, a uh, partner or a small group. Uh, mm -hmm. And then they're gonna reconvene as a class and discuss the results. So we're gonna have them put these aside. We're gonna go back to these eventually. Just do this, do this exercise. We'll talk about them and now let's put them aside. And then here's the question. If you were able to tell the difference between and identify problems as being a particular type of problem with a particular set of steps you could find to take to find a solution. Do you th think it would make it easier to deal with problems? And then I wrote a little thing. Hopefully the response will be yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you know, not everybody's going to say yes because there's always somebody who wants to say no. Um, so if they do, give them some time to arrive at a conclusion that would be based on additional learning. And then. Um, now we're going to look at how we can identify problems. So next page. And yes, there is another way. And then, you know, four questions. You know, can you can a problem be more than just another problem? I always looked at problems as this is just another problem or this is hard and this one is easy. You know, I didn't I didn't ever think about the different kinds of problems until we had the Kinefin. Did I say hmm. that right? Kinefin. 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 Kinefin way. Hmm. Uh, can a problem have more than one solution? Yeah. Can a problem have a recipe or steps for trying to find a solution? Yes. So the answer is yes, 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 yes. And over on the right side is a little brief introduction to the four, four uh, categories or situations. Yeah, so I love the idea of each one goes behind a different door, too. Yeah, I did, too. I love that little picture that I found. I was very fortunate to find one of the four doors. Because most most things where they show choices, mm -hmm. it's three. It, they show you three. They don't show right, you four. Right, right. Yep. And I couldn't find four. <laughs> like, there it is. All right, next page, um, which is the, uh, oh boy, Kinefin, K yeah. Yep. Kinefin framework decision making, um, which I would hand out to the class. And it basically tells you the difference between them. It's pretty much the one that you handed out, but I changed the wording. Good. Um, you know, that would be more uh, understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular to the students I have. And at the bottom, I, of course, I have words that they probably wouldn't know, um, the vocabulary. So I would make sure that they understood the vocabulary. And we would look at this together as a class and, and talk about it. Yeah, this is great. So go to the next page. So here we have on the next page, the four different categories or types or situations, simple complicated, complex, and chaotic. Um, I didn't include the uh, disorder because that just didn't, I didn't feel mm -hmm. like getting into that. But for a bit more clarity, let's equate pet care to four different problem situations. So what I would do is present them with these four different pets or any four different pets and just say overall from what you know, you know, unless you're an expert in one of these, which I'm not an expert in any of them, um, you know, how would you classify or identify the overall general care of a turtle or a fish or a, you know, a monkey or a rhinoceros. And then have them according to these four categories at the top, you know, the, the chart. They could use the chart, they can use whatever. Um, and then let's assume for the purposes of this analogy that the pets being discussed only require basic needs. That's 
particular to the animal. Um, no, you know, they're not blind or, you know, have one leg. Um, as a pet owner, you've accepted the responsibility of fulfilling those needs. And you have only common familiarity, if any, with each pet. So you don't have any pre-knowledge about any of these. Mm -hmm. um, think about what you know about each of these animals and what you would need to do to be capable of maintaining each as a pet. So just very general. Um, and have them do this and think about it, okay? Would I consider taking a, taking care of a turtle simple or complex? And, you know, there's going to be different answers because, I, you know, I started thinking about perspective and it's going to be from an individual's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so there can be different answers. There is no right answer, I don't think. I don't know. Um, so I didn't put any answers down because I couldn't come up with a, a static answer that would apply to all the situations. Although as I'm looking at it, I could see a turtle being a more simple case. There's really not that much you have to do with a turtle. Right. And a tropical fish is probably multiple ways of taking care of a tropical fish, but you really do need informa more information about, about the tropical fish. Right. And the monkey, it's like, you know, there's so many different things you could try. You probably um, don't, well, you know, there's, there's, there's probably no cause and effect. Like there probably isn't a, a right way. Right. It's gonna right. it's gonna come over time. And if I had a pet rhinoceros, that would be pretty chaotic. Yeah, <laughs> and so and that's what I was hoping. You yeah. know, I don't want to give them any answers, but that's what I saw it as as well. Um, that's what I was hoping they would arrive at, but maybe not. You know, right. might no, somebody might good, think the monkey discussion. is chaotic. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so next page. Um, is the problem or the task or the challenge of the, you know, whatever it is that you're facing, um, one of these. And so make sure each of the kids have a copy of the Kneffin framework mm -hmm. and a copy of the previous page with the uh, different animals on it. Um, go over the vocabulary that's included, make sure they understand that. And then um, have them identify like we just talked how they fit in and then i found some other definitions which, which i thought maybe would clarify um the meanings of these because i for a long time couldn't figure out like really the the specific difference between complicated and complex i had to do some research on it mm -hmm. um, before it made real sense to me and um these were again from simon ash who i had that first quote from i liked i like what he does um, and then a uh, problem well-defined is a problem half solved. I like that quote from yep. John Dewey. So next page. And this is the continued of the same exercise. The aim of the first part of this exercise was to have the students uh, become familiar with the identification of problem types and determine whether they would identify the overall general care of each pet as being one of the four. According to how how they would perceive the factors of caring for each animal, because I'm assuming they don't have any prior knowledge. There would be no exact right or wrong answers since each individual perception may be different. Mm -hmm. But it would be a good point for discussion. Why do you think this is chaotic and not complex? Why do you, you know, and it would be more, more looking into the differences between uh, those four different types of problems. And then uh, uh, Skipping down to uh, below the picture there, and I really like that picture because it shows two po different points of view. It says, now in an attempt to narrow down the identification process, we mm. would go more into each. You know, until you pair. mentioned it, I didn't realize that, that, that the, the two different points of view of that figure, which from one side looks like a six and from the other side looks like a nine. And that's brilliant. Isn't that great? I love yeah. that picture. Um so then they would, you know, they did a general overlong all thing. So now, you know, let's look at the feeding of each of these animals. How would you describe the feeding of a turtle or the feeding of a fish or a rhinoceros? And how about the environment? How about the grooming? How about the exercise? How about the expenses of keeping this pet? So that you could narrow it down to more specific rather than an overall general you know, the pet in general kind of thing. Um, so for each pet, consider the feeding, you know, what, when, where, how are you going to do this environment? You know, what, what kind of environment are you going to give a rhinoceros? Mm -hmm. uh, grooming, how are you going to groom a rhinoceros or a monkey? You know, the exercise and the expenses. So to take each of these separately and then fit them into one of those four situation types. Yep. And then on the next page, 
is be continued. Mm. Um, after completing and discussing the results of the PET exercise, the difference between the four types listed in the framework should be becoming more apparent and easier to understand. Uh, and then the need for the inclusion of data or expert input, which would make it complicated, or the employing of different experiments, probes, that would make it complex, or just being a situation of complete danger and disorder, which would be chaotic, which would be a rhinoceros, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, skip down to where it says, has anyone changed their perceptions regarding any of the previous identifications they had made? So has anything changed as you looked more closely? Um, I put in the middle that, you know, it may take uh, doing some research. They may have to get in and start researching. How do I take care of a monkey? You know, what what is its food needs? What does it need? What's its environment? Um, would anyone change any of the previous decisions they'd made regarding how they'd identified something as being a particular type? So, you know, maybe you thought a uh, tropical fish would be simple. But then after you looked into it, well, yikes, it's, you know, it's not really so simple. It's more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, so do their perceptions change? And then moving on to the next page, we go back to exercise A, which was the very first one where the teacher presented a real life problem and they had to uh, come up with solutions. Okay. And they were basically at that point, they knew nothing about the Kinefin or, or four choices or, you know, various types of problems. All they knew it was a problem. How do you solve it? Which would be the classic way of solving a problem. So now the class gets together in the same pair or the group or whatever they were and to review the problem and the previous decisions that they had come up with and then have them reconsider the problem and identify the problem as somewhere on the four types of, of the Kinefin. Um, mm. Then they go back together as a full group and and discuss the the outcome the results and then you know again if anyone had not answered yes to the question that was posed earlier um if you were able to tell the difference between and identify the problems as being a particular type of problem re-ask the question mm -hmm. see if anybody has gone from a no to a yes and if not then more instruction may be needed because the answer should be yes mm -hmm. you know there should be a yes question and answer to that so if there's still a no well you know why do you think it's no and and discuss it and then i put a little note underneath remind the students that trying and not succeeding is not failure you know but it offers another opportunity to try again it's the not trying that is failure and mm -hmm. that's what i'm always you know telling them don't hand me in something and put idk on it you know mm -hmm. that's definitely going to be wrong you know what did you learn from that so you know that's failing but put something down. And if it's wrong, then we'll talk about why it's wrong and, and fix it. You know, just like you do with a problem, a solution or, you know, the success is the reward for enduring the journey of seeking the answer. Um, and that's it. I'm done. Well, I just, as you, as you talk about IDK, I'm just reminded when my, um, my father at one point asked me to balance my grandmother's checkbook, right? <laughs> my grandmother was probably, 80 years old at the time. So I sit down with their checkbook and I see the, the entries and it's ODK, OGK, OGK, OGK. And I'm like, what, what does OGK mean for the amount of the check? She says, Oh, it means only God knows. So it's like, how am I supposed to balance this? You know, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, well, no, so this is some very, very rich discussions in it. Um, I, you know, I, uh, I see like up, you know, upper high school or, um, mm -hmm. or, or kids who are older really getting into these discussions and it kind of opening their eyes to like, not everything has one solution and not everything right. is going to work the first time you try it. And that's part of the process of, uh, moving right. forward is just mm -hmm. trying things. So that, uh, right. yeah, this is really interesting. I thought if it was watered down a little bit, you might be able to do it with, um, you know, a version of it with the uh, middle school kids. Mm -hmm. um, it would have to be, of course, you know, adapted to that age level and that thinking level. But mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. Tammy, what do you think? Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. I love it. Sorry, it took me a minute to find my mute button. 
<clears throat> unmute, sorry. You know, I, I'm just in love with this, right? Because, because, I mean, not to be rude, I gave a con I, you know present presentation today, and a lady walked in with her little dog in a backpack. And let me tell you something: that dog was the star of the show, and then she just sat there. Mm -hmm. I, I just, but I think about animals, and I think about. I also love the story about only God knows. I'm going to start putting that in my checkbook, Mitch. <laughs> okay, OGK. <laughs> you'll be you'll be hearing from Brent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, any other comments? I loved all the visuals. So good. This brings yeah. it to life. So nice job. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I just want to let people know, you don't have to take, that was a really extensive going through of the lesson and you don't have to take that long. You know, you can and explain every page of the lesson, but you can just give a you can give an overview. I think in Barbara's lesson that was really helpful to go through page by page, but don't feel that that's what you have to do. Um so who wants to present next? I'll go. Good. Okay. Do you want to so um let me do you, do you want to uh, project from your own screen? No. Oh, okay. So let me um, let me pull this up. Okay, and um, I think I have to make it larger. Okay, and then share the screen. Here we go. Okay. Barbara, I really loved your visuals. I do not have any visuals. I don't know how to do visuals. So that is something I'm yet to learn, okay? Yeah, me too. You can see <laughs> on my slides, right? <sighs> okay. So um, my lesson is on the Kanevin um, framework. And it starts off by talking about the four types of problems and then how to solve problems towards the end. And really, um, I'm a special ed teacher, so... Um, I'm going to be teaching my paraeducators this. Mm -hmm. So it's it's geared to the adults and it's kind of like a, in a fast nutshell, what I learned and that what I can teach them. So anyway, um, it starts off with Dave Snowden, developed the Kinevin framework. There's four types, simple, complicated, complex, and chaotic. Um, and then it kind of describes each one, simple problems. The answer is mostly self-evident. Everyone knows the right answer one right answer and then we would have a discussion and talk about what simple problems are mm -hmm. after that we would go into complicated problems and i'd explain that and they also have this handout or a handout like this so that they would have something to keep with them and to refer back to it again um, an expert should be able to produce an answer that will work experts can find a workable solution to a problem usually more than one solution will work the downfalls that an expert gets locked into the things that they do well. They don't think about new or outside of the box options and the diversity will result in better information, analysis, decisions, and execution. Again, followed by a discussion on a variety of complicated problems. Mm -hmm. Then we would go into complex problems and those are workable solutions will emerge and with hindsight, we would know what to do, but not in advance. But ask them to um, that they would need to try a few things and do these three things in short, repeated cycles, a probe or an experiment, make sense of the situation, respond, and then keep recycling on those. Doing small actions may have big consequences. They could be positive or negative. And taking more data does not yield better results. Experts cannot drive the decision and what works will emerge over time with complex problems. Um, good probes to try. Um, so I, I just list, there was more, but I listed four that I felt right. like would be really good ones. So I think that's a manageable chunk too, you know, yeah. four. Yeah. Yeah. And the first one, um, safe if they fail. That's always like the best one. You always want to do something that's like, it's okay if it fails, you're just going to try it. Um, and then two, um, could plausibly work, not necessarily likely, but it's like throwing spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. 
And then three, um, some low probability, high reward, something like a lottery win. <laughs> Probably not going to win, but it could. Right. That's something that, you know, a problem that's solved. And then some number four is some that you believe will fail because we learn more from failure than success. And I find that with working with my students that these are the things not to try. And so we try until we find out what not to try. So we mm -hmm. learn a lot from those. And then why people make situations complex. Um, so the reason why is that we are inconsistent. And so uh, the next little piece is stuff that um, my parents really need to know. Um, one, we have different roles at different times. That's why we can turn a situation into complex or our actions are affected by emotions or we have conflicting values or no two of us are alike or we are unpredictable. So um, then we would have a discussion on complex problems. And chaotic problems are an emergency. Do something now. We don't know the right answer. Act as fast. Act fast to make sure we're safe and someone's in charge. And then discussion on chaotic problems. And then after like just presenting all these different types of problems, um, a quick, in a nutshell on problem solving. So I'd introduce the John Boyd developed OODA loops as a method for problem solving. And I said, it's a circle or a loop with four actions, observing, looking at the problem, orienting, coming up with possible solutions deciding, choosing a solution, and acting, doing it. The goal is to iterate, and that means to move through the cycle over and over again as quickly as possible. And I think of it as thinking quickly on your feet. The quicker you think and the better ideas you have help to make you more successful. Um, I would tell them the things to remember when problem solving is um, like, I listed four, always look forward rather than backward. Celebrate being wrong as information that gets you closer to getting it right. Um, have an open mindset rather than a closed mindset and treat the problem as if there is more than one right answer. I mm -hmm. will um, finalize this with a closing that um, I would let them know that we should continually expose ourselves to new situations, problems, and new learnings, which are strategies, then practice our problem solving strategies so we can access them and use them fluently when we really need them. You know, I could see this being a, really a basis of whole discussion in a, a professional learning group, right? Yes. Um, this would be a, you know, it probably would take more than one session, but I mean, maybe, maybe one session, but it just like, it gets everybody into all these terms. I think that, you know, this is, these are great discussion points. And this Thank discussion you. Opens. Thank you. Thank you. I, I also wanted to say thank you, because I can see that this becomes a point where you can refer back to it all year long. As uh, a kid comes up and he, we've got this deal, then you can kind of, okay, now what is this and how do we move forward? And what are the, what are the ground rules? I just think that, Doing this, especially at the beginning of the year, would set the tone for the whole year. You know, Thanks. and I, I, can I just add my stuff? Like I'm listening and even one line of that, are you looking forward or you're looking backwards, right? I think about that even in as an adult, you know, like <clears throat> not that you want my life story, but I'm sitting here the other night thinking about something that happened. I'm like, Tammy, you're looking in the rear view mirror. Like, like... <laughs> Like, right. And it, it's mm. just, I just find that every single one of those lines is so powerful and, and carries so much impact. It's, it's amazing. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Yeah. That Linda, can I say, did you, did you say that your uh, target audience was uh, para educators? Yes. That is so perfect. You know, we used to be called para pros um, years and years ago. I was a para pro for a couple of years. I wish I had had something like that then. I really do. That was that is um, really perfect. Yeah. Well, Mitch, you did a great job giving us all this good information. Oh, so well, I just you. compiled it all, yeah. put it together in a little bit. Yeah. So thank you very, very much. No, but you got the you got really you summarized it better than I can. So that was great. Thank you. 
Okay, who wants to go present next? Okay, Lucinda. This, you, me? Okay. Okay. Do you do you want you, to? Um, you'd have to teach me how, so it might be easier for you to share. Okay. It. All right. Well. Um, okay. So I can share. Uh, let me just pull it up. While you're doing that, I'm going to give some background. This, um, I've taught for like 33 years and then I retired and I haven't taught anything for like four years. And this year I went, oh, I don't want to lose that. So I'm getting my teaching credential renewed so I don't lose it. And so I'm substituting, but I'm not making lesson plans for kids anymore. So as I've been thinking about this class and how universal it is and how much you have to offer on everything, I've just really been thinking about what's going on on our lake. I'm in a homeowners association and we have three lawsuits going on right now and we have an election and the board going against what is state law wants to kind of take over the election so they can have like-minded people on the board and I have been the one who has been kind of running the elections and making sure that we've had one for the last couple of years so as I'm thinking about this I'm thinking about it for adults and not so much as a teaching the content itself, but as a gateway for us to start working together as an election committee to solve the problems that are going to be coming up for us in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Okay, so start the slideshow. Is that what we can do? I can, I can, yeah, I can do it that way. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the. And then the next, we can go on to the next one. I've kind of done the pre. Hmm. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to say, this is the basic framework that I've learned and tell them that I've been taking a couple of classes with them in mind <laughs> and with what the problems that are going on in the lake. <laughs> and they're, they're my, they're the ones that I'm kind of thinking about. And that this was really insightful for me in terms of thinking about the problems that it opens things up and relieves some pressure and helps you think about things differently moving forward. So I would explain what the simple, complicated, complex, and chaotic framework is of the Kinefin. I'm mm -hmm. hoping I'll get that right by the time I teach it to them. Okay, the next one. And they won't even know, so you can pronounce it however you want to. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but what I did is I got a quick, this is like a five-minute video, YouTube video from David Snowden on the what this is all about. So they right. hear from and, me and they hear from them. And I didn't do it Go to ahead. share sound. Um, so I you don't stop. have to, we don't oh. have, we don't, okay. we don't have to watch it. I, I, it's on the, it's nothing new from what you've done. I just, in honoring time, there's a couple of okay. little quick videos in here. So I just want to say, I'm throwing this in to kind of give them some ground Good. Um, okay. background. And I think if I did it, we have, have developed him, mm -hmm. so we can go on to the next one. Okay. And then I want to take some time to really discuss where are we as a lake community, which, what is our, where are we on this? Are we on simple? Are we on complicated? Are we on complex? And talk through why they think we're in each one of these categories. And, you know, there are some problems that are simple problems that we're not as a group facing, but they're, mm -hmm. what are we facing as a group, as the election mm -hmm. committee? Okay, then the next slide. So now what? The, if we, I think we're going to come to that we're in a complex situation and how do we proceed? How do we move on? How do we uh, create the community we all want to be a part of? Next slide. And then talk about the OODA loops and that this is a problem set, um, problem solving strategy and what it is the observe, the orient, decide, and act. You I hate to say this, but OODA loops, to me, I thought it was a person's name. And it wasn't until I was putting this together, I went, oh, that's an acronym. Mm. <laughs> I'm kind of slow on some things. So, and next slide. Then there's another quick um, five minute little YouTube video on what this is, the OODA is like after I go through it and then they'll go through it. So we have two uh, applications, next slide. And then um, to really start to dig into, okay, where are we now as a as a, an election committee? What have we already done as the election committee as part of our observation process? 
let's look at proposed policy timelines and documents that we've already created or that are already with us. What, uh, what happened because of the things that we've done up until this point for in years past? What have we learned from this? What did we do well? And why didn't it turn out the way we expected? Hmm. What are some things that we'd like to kind of change? Next slide would be the orient. What are our goals as an election committee? And to look at the bylaws, covenants, and RCWs that will kind of help us know what, what we can and cannot do based on the laws. And then get into those probes. What can we try? What would happen if we do that? And some pre-mortems on some of these strategies that we can try to go through. Mm -hmm. And then the next slide would be to make a decision. I thought it was really fun in one of those readings that they you've always, I've heard about the uh, flight fight or freeze, mm -hmm. but I didn't really know this, do what everybody else is doing. <laughs> and I just thought, that, you know, that's what we do a lot. We don't fight, we don't flight, we don't, we don't freeze, we just go along. And I think right. that that's a lot of what's going on in the lake is we're just going along. We don't like it, but we just keep going with it. <laughs> and that's where we get. Or do you intentionally act on what we want to do? So choosing what are we going to do? And then the next slide is acting. What are we gonna do? Who's gonna do what, when, and where? And when do we meet again? And then follow it up with that anti-fragility uh, work that you were talking about, that we are independent and autonomous, that we need to be professional with our communal goals and values, and that this is an opportunity for us to grow and learn, that we will make mistakes, we will continue to make mistakes. We will learn from those. We will observe them, reorient, and move on. <laughs> wow. So, like, as I'm going through this, I'm thinking, you know, you set this up for your late committee. But any, or, any of us who were in organizations, and if we're in a group that's trying to problem solve for an organization, we could make some minor changes to this and um, use it as a basis of setting the stage for what whatever organization that we're doing that's trying to make a change. This is really that's what I'm hoping. yeah, this is this is really such a great framework. Thank you. I've been super enjoyed the class. Oh. And it's it has helped me really think through it and not be quite so um, negative about what's mm -hmm. going on here. Oh good. Yeah. Other other comments too? Did, uh, yeah. Anybody else involved with groups that are handling, uh, trying to handle difficult issues and, um, you know, your thoughts about using something like this to frame how the, how the group works. Yep. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait. To, oh my gosh. That is, it's perfect. I, we have a lot going on in this facility right now that is, <laughs> this is perfect. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Lucinda. Okay, um, I guess I don't know. I don't think Sarah's here, right? But Jesse, you're here. Do you want to present or? Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you, uh, should, do you want me to make you? Do you want to present your? Um, uh, I'm doing Zoom on my phone, so it might be best if you share for me. Okay, I um, I can do that. I think. And. Here we go. Oh, I'll go into slideshow. Okay. All right. So um, the main audience that I would be doing this for is my um, mentoring group at school. So I teach high schools and it's um, mostly ninth to 11th graders, but I have a couple of seniors, um, but mostly the younger group. So um, I really wanted to focus on just overall problem solving and um, looking at the types of problems and then how we best can go about them. So uh, we can move to the next slide. Uh, so I just kind of started the lesson like a typical uh, lesson would with some learning outcomes. So I really wanted to make sure that they um, see what 
our classic normal decision making processes um, and the factors that affect the outcomes. Um, and then get exposure to the different types of problems and how we categorize them. And we can move on. Okay. Um, so then I just kind of wanted to cover the classic decision making model that we talked about. Um, and this is most of the time what they would assume that um, is the right way to go. Um, and so we would kind of talk about this and maybe some ideas that they have around problems that they've um, encountered and how they've used this model to come to a solution. And this is very graphically, this is really cool. Thank I love, you. I love the way it looks. Um, and then we could go to the next slide. Okay. Um, and so then I kind of took like the slide that you had, Mitch, and- um, and, and made it better. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that, but I kind of categorize them a little bit of like what the problem is and um, the complexities of different problems and then also the complexities of solutions. So when there is a problem that arises, there are going to be unknowns. There's going to be the hidden assumptions um, and the bias that we have about those problems, but also in the solutions. Um, if we are coming to a decision, and I really like that second to last one, we think we know when we really don't know. Um, we really think that we know the solution, that's the best solution and the outcomes of that, but in reality, most of the time we don't. Mm -hmm. so. And I like the last one also, you know, solutions are going to have, although uh, united and unknown consequences, and like that could be a good discussion because most kids don't think about that at all, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a huge issue, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay, and we can move on. This one's just short. Um, so then now we're going to just, I would take them into the types of problems, um, which is that Sinefin, uh mm -hmm. framework there. Mm -hmm. um, and so kind of outlined the simple, complicated, complex, and chaotic and I would just kind of cover those um, and just end the lesson on the next slide with a group discussion, similar to the one we did, um, trying to come up with a situation for each scenario, uh, why they categorize them like that, and then what would be the solution to the problem. Wow. Um, so trying to think about, uh, you know, and I, I didn't really get to share this because I, I missed last session, but um, I, I looked at on the reflection from last week about a simple, a simple problem being um, a student forgetting their pencil. Mm -hmm. And um, the solution for most teachers is just go grab them a pencil. But we we aren't teaching them agency and being able to seek out those resources themselves. Um, and so, you know, when we're talking about simple solutions and problems, I think there's just a general idea that we just fix it right away. But I think that would be a good time to have the conversation of how we can be critical thinkers and problem solvers to seek resources. Yeah, so and that, not just go into our knee-jerk reaction, right? Right. It's like, oh, here's a pencil, okay? And then right, the next day, the student comes in without a pencil again, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, I think that's the case for most of us who are educators. We know that's a problem and we get irritated, but we're kind of feeding into that cycle too, so. Um, and then I would bring them back together uh, in the next slide just for a class debrief. Mm -hmm. um, and then have one person share from each group what they we, what they thought. And I, I didn't put this in there, but I really like how we designated like that one person to be the manager. I think that's, that's a really good strategy. Wasn't that a so, great idea? Yeah. 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 I think that's a great strategy. So, um, and then the last slide I just kind of made for myself um, and others. So these would be like some follow-up lessons or some different activities that could be done afterwards. So 
mm-hmm. like the problem solving, give problems and scenarios. This would take a lot of planning, but have the students try to solve without knowing all the pieces of the issue. Right. And then and then seeing how those unknown consequences can can happen when not knowing everything. Mm-hmm. Um and then teach about UDA. So and now that they know about the traditional normal problem solving and um the different types of um problems there, they can then I could teach more about the UDA cycle. And then with that, then they could do a normal versus UDA and compare the two and try to solve a problem using the different formats. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, this is like uh, such a cool introduction. Like I, I could see middle school and high school, you, you know, this could be used for either one. Um, and it really gets it, you know, with a teacher who's making the students talk about it, you know, not just presenting it, which is, you know, the way you, you, you phrase it is getting the students talk. I could, I could really see this opening up their eyes that there's a, you know, that there's really a different way to go about thinking about issues than just like, oh, you know, oh, it's just another problem or, I'll just, I'll just do this. I'll just do this without thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I th- I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of times where we think that they're able to solve problems or even, you know, just science or math questions or whatever it might be, the content, mm-hmm. we want them to be problem solvers. But mm-hmm. I really like this session because we don't realize that some students need to be explicitly taught problem solving. We assume that they learn and they already know going into our class, but Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important for them to understand that there's multiple ways to get to a solution. And also we need to think about all of the outcomes and plan backwards a little bit. So. Yeah. Uh, Other thoughts. Tammy. You asked me for my feedback. Yes. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, please don't be. I just got leaked on by a pen all over. So I was just Oof. trying to ma- manage that. That um, sounds to me like a pretty complicated problem. It is a complicated problem. And you know what I loved about, about this was the range, right? Well, first of all, I love the graphics, right? I mean, I love them. They're simple. They're easy to, to manage. They're You look at them and you go, okay, I can see what's going on here. So that's... But I agree with you that we don't give kids enough. I think you called it agency. And I love that word. I think that that's where the power in education lies, right? It, it doesn't lie in having them know that two and two is four. It lies in why you use that, what you use it for, and when it's appropriate to use, right? I, I just, I love, I love that. So Thanks, Mitch, for letting me have my say. Yeah. And I'm going to step out and go wash my hands because I've got heat okay, all over great. for some reason. Oof. Okay. So, so on the spreadsheet is also a uh, lesson from Marin, and I don't know that Marin's going to be able to make it this week or next week. So I just, um, so it's, it, I I thought it was really good, and I, I I'm not going to try to explain it, but I just want to at least get it on the screen so that you can you can see it because I because oops I just sorry I I always do that um, I hit share instead of slideshow, um, but it's about the flex you know it's also about you know the Kinevan framework and Uda and she goes into you know talking about um, you know. It, how do we see these types of problems and getting a discussion with students about say these types of problems and then talking about uh you know her graphic was really interesting about the Kinevan framework and explaining them and then uh going back to those problems um she also has the Dave Snowden um uh video in hers to explain to have him him explaining those problems um as leaders we have uh and then 
now that they have a background in those problems, it's like take those same problems again and relate them back to the to the to the framework, and then um, and then a discussion. You know, uh, in your life, what's hardest for you? Um, and then um, and then how you should be thinking about problems. Um, a discussion about uh questions that you can ask in order to uh solve problems and you know relating it you know uh to how you might think in a fixed mindset um versus how you might think you know in a in a growth mindset and um and then kind of summarizes with a, with another video um and then your summary you know don't give up in practice so i thought i'd at least run through those slides with you all um because I, I i don't think that that she's going to be able to present them but i i thought that they were really good also so um that's in the spreadsheet so you you have access to those uh and then well is there anybody else who would like to present um i think everybody else wanted to present next week i oh yes sorry. i just I just wanted to say I'm going to have to go. My um, foreign exchange student just ha had wow, got I, injured in soccer oh, practice. And so oh. I keep going because they answer the phone, but I think okay. I'm just going to have to go. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Good luck. Good luck to her. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, there's one more thing. I, I'm going to put this into the chat. Um, there was a person who I taught this to um, probably around three or four years ago. And he just did a podcast, and on his podcast was David Snowden. <laughs> so somehow or other, he is, you know, he got the connection to David Snowden. And he and David Snowden and another person were also talking about the UDA methodology. So I thought that was, I have not listened to it yet because he just tweeted it to me um, today. But just the fact that it was there, I'm going to put it into the chat. Um, so at some point, if if you're interested and um, you know want to uh, listen to that, my guess is it's going to be really interesting. Um, anyhow, I'm going to listen to it in the next day or two. So, um, okay. So um, so that's that's it for tonight. And then um, next Tuesday we'll have other people presenting. And if you came tonight. You don't have to come next Tuesday, but you're welcome to come next Tuesday because I think I think these are a lot of fun. So um, everybody, I'll I'll stay on in case you have questions. I'm going to stop the um, the recording.